Hello everybody. Welcome back to Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. This week is going to be a little bit different. I am running out of ideas for content while I'm still not in my van. It's still too cold to get back in the van and I'm really busy trying to get ready to move out of my house. So this week, because the Paralympics are going on right now, I've decided to um, tell you a little bit about my Paralympic experience. I actually um, was involved, or how should I put this? I was attempting to get to two different um, Paralympics. I tried to get to the 2010 Paralympics as a cross-country skier, and I'll tell you about that um, in the video. That didn't happen, but I actually did um, compete in the London 2012 Paralympics as a rower. So this is a little bit about my journey. Okay, so uh, let me start with, let's see, it would have been 2002 when I started thinking about competing at a Paralympic Games. I was um, introduced to the sport of cross-country skiing and it was something that I really enjoyed and it was really difficult and I've never been very athletic before but um, this was just something that I don't know somebody the national team coach had come out from Saskatchewan the national Paralympic team coach had come out to do a camp to teach us how to use our new equipment and cross-country skiing was a relatively new sport I think um, adaptive cross-country skiing and so anyways we brought the national team coach out to teach us how to do things and he said to a couple of us that if we were interested in training really hard over the next year that he would pay our way to go to Quebec where there was going to be a world cup the following year which I think was 2004 so this must have been 2003 um so I decided I was going to do that. And when I said that, I had two people that were part of the club, that uh, the adaptive cross-country club that said that they would get me going and, and uh, help me get towards that goal. And so one of them, Cindy Garvin, was um, my personal trainer through this whole journey. An amazing, amazing woman who... Actually, I think it was just over a year ago or maybe two years ago, lost her life to cancer. I think it was cancer. Anyways, very sad, but she was an amazing woman and, and she did a lot for me. She She's um, one of the main people who are responsible for getting me to London. So the 2010 Games were going to be held, uh, Paralympic Games were going to be held in Vancouver in Canada and that's like four and a half hours from where I live and so I went I trained all that winter I worked with Cindy and I worked with my coach um, Don Reimer uh, he was my coach for the first year and uh, we just skied and skied and skied and I went to the gym three times a week with Cindy and uh I made it to the World Cup in Quebec and it was my first experience and I think I came dead last in everything but uh, it was something that was um, an experience like no other and just really neat that I was able to travel out to another province in Canada that I'd never been. Anyways, I was inspired and I decided to make my goal the 2010 Paralympic Games. So I kept working on that for the next few years. I uh, switched coaches to one who had a little bit more experience with international sport and uh, Bill Maloney. And he worked with me right up until um, till 2009. And uh, we built a really good friendship. Um, and he worked really hard with me and was a super amazing coach. And uh, anyways, we traveled quite a bit. I managed to get my first trip over to Europe and it was paid for because I was attending World Cups over there in Germany and I hmm, can't remember, Italy, I think. And uh, it was pretty exciting. Um, 
nothing I ever expected uh, for my life, but that's what what it was. And I was having a great time and I was working really hard. Um, yeah, so it was really great. So in 2009, or actually 2008, maybe seven, I started rowing in the summer as cross training for the skiing and was really enjoying that. And so over the summer I would row and the coaches at rowing kept trying to convince me to switch sports or do both sports and try to get to the 2010 Paralympic Games as a skier, cross country skier, and then go to London in 2012 as a rower. And I just was not interested. I was I was almost 50 when I was um, doing all this training and I just had put my whole life on hold. I didn't have time for family, friends, uh, anything else. It just, my whole life was focused on getting ready for these games. And so I, but I did, I can't remember why I decided, but I did, did decide to go to um, Munich and compete at a World Cup qualifier for the Beijing Paralympics, which were in 2008. Um, I went there and I actually was, I did qualify for Beijing and um, that was pretty exciting, but it still wasn't my main sport and I wasn't really interested in doing that. And while I was in, Be uh, in Munich, um, the second race that I, w I was warming up for it, I had been having pain in my ribs for, I don't know, two or three weeks before I got to Munich. And, um, well, just as I was warming up for, I think it was the second race, or actually it would have been the last race I was warming up for it. And uh, I felt something kind of pop and a really sharp pain, but I was wired for the race. And so I talked to my coach and told her what happened. And we decided that I was going to race. And so I raced and I felt nothing when I was racing. I mean, adrenaline works, I guess. And when I got back to the dock after the race, uh, I, I need help getting back into my chair. And so my coach grabbed me around um, the upper waist, right where my rib was broken. Um, when she put her hand there to help lift me up, I just screamed to it. Um, it just was such a sharp pain and anyways, so my rib was broken. I went back to Canada. Um, I stopped training, um, hard training for quite a while until that healed. And when it did heal, it was fall and I was ready to go back to skiing and I started skiing and I was, um, going to races and, um, training, but I don't know what had changed in me, but it was just, I would um, be driving to a lot of these races on my own and crying in the car all the way there because I was nervous or I don't know why, but it was, I don't know what had changed in me. And I just, so finally um, in the spring of that year, I sat down with my coach with Bill and we talked and I decided that I couldn't do it. And so I stopped and there was such a sense of relief. I just felt so good about the decision. So I guess it must have been the right one. Well, anyways, move forward another year ahead. And um, the there was a new rowing coach at the rowing center where I had been rowing at before. And uh, he approached me and said, you know, I'd really like to work with you if you would like to try and train for the 2012 Paralympics in London. And I kept saying no to him. He kept asking, I kept saying no. And then one day I was feeling fat and out of shape and not good. And so I decided to go to the gym and I went to the gym and did a spin class. And when I left that class, I don't know if you, you know, some of you out there might understand what it's like when, um, when you've been out of shape and then you go and you get some exercise and you work really hard and get some really good exercise, all these endorphins come out and you're just like high. It's like a high, I guess. And, uh, I felt so good and I was so inspired and I enjoyed that spin class so much. Um, I'm not generally this spontaneous, but I phoned the coach. I can't remember if it was that day or the next day and the rowing coach and said, okay, let's do this. 
So he said, well, come on down in the morning. I said, you like t tomorrow? And he goes, yeah, tomorrow. No sense waiting. So we got started and we worked towards it. And um, yeah, I qualified. Can't, I had to qualify different this time. Oh no, I did. I went to Italy and qualified there. Um, and then came home and trained, I think, I can't remember for how much longer. And then I went to London and competed. And I'll show you a little bit of video of, of the London race. It was very exciting. I had some family and some friends come out and watch. And so they were videotaping this. So it might seem kind of loud. They were all very excited to be there as much as I was excited to have them there watching me. Um, so you might want to turn your volume down for the video. But uh, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Brazil, Claudia Santos. In lane two, representing Israel, Moron Samuel. In lane three, representing Ukraine, Ala Lysenko. In lane four, representing Belarus, Ludmila Valchok. In lane five, representing France, Natalie Benoit. And in lane six, representing Canada, Joan Reed. Remaining now in this first heat, in third position, Korea about a length and a third back, just maintaining the advantage ahead of Joan Reed. But Valchuk looking very strong indeed, so powerful, stabbing stroke, pushing hard to the water, extending that lead stroke by stroke. And Santos has put in such a burn here on lane six, gathering momentum, trying to come back on the lead from the Belarusian. And Santos has actually gone to square blade now in his last Joe! section of the race to try and raise her rate of strike again and push ahead of the Belarusian. It's all about that first place now as we come down to the finish line so to avoid Keep the best start tomorrow. Joe! Inside the last 50 metres now and Valchok still maintaining the edge of a higher Joe! rate than the Brazilian, not eking out boat speed advantage. Joe, down to the line is the last few strokes and Joe! with Miller Valchok of Belarus qualifies direct for the A final. In second position, ahead of Joan Reed of Canada and Joan Reed of Korea. Fifth position will go to... Okay, I know the video quality wasn't that great. It was loud and um, you couldn't, it was far away maybe. Um, they were using their iPads. But anyways, that's uh, that's my experience at the, the lead up and the actual competing at the 2012 Paralympic Games. I have to say that when I was watching those videos, <laughs> I'm still a little bit... Uh, I don't know, it just, it brings back all these really great memories and I'm just kind of crying tears of, wow, that was so great. So anyways, that's enough for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you again next week.